Throughout its life, Wilderness Safaris has made significant investments in sustainable tourism initiatives, a concept that Costas Creest from National Geographic Adventure magazine is fully aware of. Sustainable tourism is based on three key pillars. You know, th see it as kind of the, uh, the triple leg stool, all right? And they all need to be present to really make it work. So you've got first uh, environmentally sensitive operations is one of the key pillars of it. You know, uh, what's happening with our wastewater? How's the design of a building having a, a light impact on the environment and such? The second one is a direct and tangible connection to the protection and support for natural heritage conservation or cultural heritage preservation. Uh, and then the third angle on sustainable tourism would be um, a direct connection to the social and economic well-being of the people who live closest to the area where you're, you're working in. For many, the connection between sustainable tourism, conservation efforts and a profitable business is non-existent. However, it has become increasingly evident that business models and paradigms are shifting to encourage a sustainable thought process. At Wilderness Safaris, the investment in clean air technologies is seen as an economic opportunity. You know, making money is fundamental to what we do. Um, and, and, and it was very interesting. I mean, a lot of people today see a sustainable commercial model as, as one where, you, where your, your initiatives and in, in sustainable practices are surplus spends. Um, in wilderness, it's totally different. The way we see it is that it's a component spend. So we build social equity through investing in all our conservation, human and environmental conservation efforts. And that social equity is a process of creating, um, doing good creates value. I'd like to think that, you know, Bill Marriott Jr. woke up one morning and said, you know what, it's time for me to save the rainforest. Okay. I'd like to think that Sam Walton, who sits on one of the largest commercial businesses in North America and indeed the world, which is the Walmart stores, woke up five years ago and said, you know what, my businesses have trashed a lot of small towns. My sourcing and purchasing policies have had a negative impact on the environment. I really feel I need to save the planet now. Maybe they did. It's quite possible. I think that Sam Walton and others woke up and they said that there is a market shift taking place. This thing we call the creative economy is too big for us to ignore. In five years time, five years ago to today, a company like Walmart has reinvented itself into a market leader through environmentally sensitive, sustainable practices. Okay. This is the future of business and businesses that don't get it now, are going to be the ones you know that are going to pay the price later and, and I could go on I could talk to you about Toyota and General Motors and, and things like that but in the travel arena I think companies like Wilderness are blazing a trail and there's no question in my mind that it's going to be with a profitable return because by put it this way by doing good we can do well. North Island in the Seychelles is a prime example of Wilderness Safari's philosophy the vision for the island was a Noah's Ark project, where the aim was to rehabilitate the island and to reintroduce the endemic and endangered bird species of the Seychelles. Three years of research was conducted before island rehabilitation was started. During this process, the food chain was restored, rats were eradicated, and the giant tortoises were reintroduced. At this time, the tourism facility was also conceptualized and constructed. Today, the conservation philosophy is displayed to the guests through allowing them to participate in the ongoing conservation programs. Wilderness Safaris sees this as their responsibility. Wilderness Safaris is in the process of introducing programs that are geared around clean air technology, which in turn mitigate the negative impact of our immediate footprint. North Island is a flagship example of sustainable tourism. With a footprint of 7.1 million acres of land across various regions in Southern Africa, there are bound to be operational challenges and difficulties. The challenges are that there's areas where you can get supply. There's obviously customs duties and border posts that, that create and long supply lines. I mean, if you take some of our fresh vegetable supply lines, you know, you're talking about a journey of a, of a lettuce that it's 1200 kilometers long before it gets to a guest plate. It needs to arrive fresh. There's the, and all these challenges that come along with it. There's obviously 
in, in, in many of the countries we operate, the, the challenge of the duties and, and customs duties become really expensive. And these challenge uh, um, the capital input of a business quite substantially when you're going into a new area, you're trying to promote it, you're trying to get it on the map in, in the tourism world, um, and it ends up, you know, you're paying a 100% duty on a, on a Land Rover to go on a game drive. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, it's hard to understand that a Land Rover can cost you 80,000 US dollars when the starting price was 30, you know. And these are the challenges that the businesses are facing. And interestingly enough, as we go along, a lot of this, especially in the SADAC region, where the countries are saying tourism is a, is, is a net employer. We need to encourage tourism. I mean, if you take just recently in the last, really in the last three months, the Zimbabwean government has said any capital item for tourism comes in duty free. When it, I mean, three months prior to that, a vehicle was 140% duty. So I think the understanding of, of, the, of the governments that, that tourism isn't the big bad wolf. It's, it's firstly, it's looking after the environment, but secondly, it's supplying a huge amount of jobs with very little capital input from the government's point of view in the form of electricity, sewerage, roads, etc. We really only need an airport. That's really all we need. We need decent international access. The rest we'll do ourselves. 26 years ago, a group of like-minded individuals started a business. The essence of the business was to take people on a journey through Africa's wilderness and conserve the pristine areas they entered. The company enjoyed year-on-year -year growth and has in fact been profitable since inception. With a 7.1 million acre footprint in 72 African destinations and a replacement value of assets in excess of $200 million, the company's sustainable cash earnings increased by 46% in the last four years. Listing on the stock exchange in order to achieve strategic goals has never been more important and real for the company. We've said as a strategic objective of the business that we'd like to double the guests that we host in the Southern African region um, by 2015. That would probably result in, in doubling the areas under influence. And at the same time, we would like to focus on areas that will richly enhance our biodiversity footprint um, and focus also on animal, animal movement corridors. We, we intend to remain profitable. We intend to grow the business. I'm not saying that we aren't going to have challenging financial years ahead, but regardless of that, um, growing our footprint means growing the financial profitability of the business. Um, and that's essential to what we're trying to do. Um, you know, that'll, that, that will provide us confidence to you know, extend the footprint even further. We have some other ideas um, of, for example, taking the wilderness kind of recipe into the ocean. Um, I think there's a, there's a huge opportunity in the ocean and we, you know, we're looking at opportunities in that regard. They have now embarked on another journey. Although they will be listing their company on the stock exchange, they hope that their beliefs will be in the minds of their investors as they continue to live their dreams. In the context of all of that, I want to leave a legacy of conservation for my children. That's, you know, I share in the same vision that this organization shares. And I believe in the same ideology, that the world's wilderness areas will save humankind. Thank you.